Hi, I'm Mitch, and welcome to the Restoration Road. In 1 Peter, Peter writes about being refined by fire. Today, we have the unspeakable privilege of sitting down with Coach Matt Crenshaw from Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, the basketball assistant coach who has given his life to honor God, to bring discipline to his life so that he can pay it forward and disciple others, young men for Christ, inside and outside the four lines of competition. Coach, thank you so much for being with us today. It's my pleasure. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I'd like to pick up your story uh, when you were young growing up and when you surrendered your life to Christ and what growing up in a Christian home was like for you. Just a spiritual home, uh, church, Bible studies, and um, just participation within the church growing up early and often. Mm. And, um, you know, just, just being, uh, with, living with your grandparents, um, you know, they were kind of old-fashioned, had old those kind of rules. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Did, well, you, you living with your grandparents because you lost your dad at an early age, right? You were, you, you don't even have memories of him, right? Yes. And so your grandparents helped raise you? Yes. Um, and so they probably helped discipline you? We weren't bad kids, but you know, we were two boys. Sure. It was a lot of discipline with her, uncles, you know, kind of from that time, the neighborhood could discipline you. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you grow up? Uh, in Virginia. Uh, lived in Maryland, lived in Texas. Uh, went to high school in Texas and then finished up three years in Texas and then finished up uh, back in Virginia. And then how did you find out you had this incredible athletic gift? Well, I think every kid grows up uh, when, when they play sports, they, you know, envision TV. Uh, that could be me, you know, mm -hmm. one day kind of having those, those thoughts. Were you playing a point guard in high school? Yes. Started off kind of as a power forward uh, center, kind of being one of the tougher guys, maybe a little taller, ninth grade year, and then sophomore year, uh, new coach came in and kind of shifted over to uh, the point guard position. Um, it was kind of by default of what I had to play my, you know, my freshman year, um, Coach Gillespie um, was my high school coach and, um, you know, kind of saw the talent and uh, what he wanted in his point guard saw it in me. The Coach Gillespie? Billy Clyde Gillespie. No kidding? He was a tough, tough guy, but also you respected him, and you had, he had a relationship with us, and it carried on, you know, after leaving um, high school, um, you know, just reaching out to him. I know I was in college, and, you know, he, he, he went through the coaching ranks, and, you know, we stayed in contact, and um, he's just a great guy. He, he was a great guy, kind of one of the first guys that um, showed me how I like to be. When, once I got into coaching, you know, I took some things that he did with us and um, just kind of tried to shape a little bit of that into my philosophies and, and what I do with my guys. Mm, I want to talk more about that. Um, when you graduated from high school, you, you had a decision to make, and your mom had been in the Army, your uh, stepdad was in the service, and, and what were you thinking about at that point? Talked to a recruiter. And I actually went to the uh, Air Force first, and because I was like, no way, going to the Army. Uh, knew a couple of Marines; they were a little too intense for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and then why no way in the Army? Just because you know my parents had kind of did that. You want to do something on your own? I wanted to do something on my Unique. own, maybe something different. Went back to Virginia, mid July, late July, and sat down with a Navy recruiter, and it's kind of decision, you know, where I went. I was, was blessed to actually get stationed in Virginia. You know, we were just kind of looking for the East Coast kind of area and uh, was in, in Virginia. And I was in a unique uh, unit. Um, we worked, you know, with the Marines. Uh, it was in Williamsburg. It's kind of tucked away. Oh, wow. So, you know, it's a tucked away unit. Um, One of the, with the most Marines. unique cities in America. Yeah. And we are uh, very historic and, you know, we were kind of secluded base worked with the Marines and um, the cargo handling y unit. And we would kind of do our missions out to sea or we would fly places. We would fly everywhere and kind of handle our mission. Hmm. Whether it be loading up ships, getting them prepared when they would, you know, transit overseas and things like that, so. And then when do you start playing basketball in the Navy? Well, at that, at that unit, um, 
because while we weren't um, deployed, you know, we had a gym on our base and we had a traveling team and we would go to other bases, uh, Washington, D.C., you know, West Virginia. We would play in, in tournaments. And um, then I was, you know, talking to a guy. A guy came to my base and uh, he joined our team and he told me about the All Navy, you know, All Navy team. It's an All Navy team. Um, you try it, you, you represent, you know, the Navy and you, uh, you know, you play against other branches. And if you're good enough, you, you'll be able to rep the uh, armed forces, you know, if you, if you get selected. So I looked into the process, and um, they had kind of had like six or seven mini camps uh, mm -hmm. throughout the U.S. and I, and they had one in Norfolk, uh, Norfolk, Virginia, on, on the base. So I went, tried out at the, at that tryout. I want to say it's about 300, 400 guys, and it was probably like that at, at you know each each tryout. And at first, I got got a letter that okay, we have interest, and you might be invited into the camp out in uh, California, the final, the final cut. Wow. And then I got a letter saying, ah, you won't make it. Uh, we, we, you know, based on, we're only bringing in a certain amount of guys and sorry, you weren't one of the guys, you know, keep up the work. How'd that make you feel? I was kind of, kind of down about it because I know I performed well at the mini camp and, um, and you know, you kind of have to go through a lot of processes of not just being able to play. You have to have recommendations from your commanding officer, mm -hmm. Your supervisors, they take your uh, work evaluations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they wanted high character guys and, you know, to represent, you know, the Navy and it would be the entire Navy. And I was kind of down about it and went and talked to uh, my direct supervisor, a troop, um, he was a chief at the time. And, you know, he said, you know, I know you have some talent. And, you know, he had played sports previously and he picked up the phone and, you know, kind of got in contact with the coaches. and. Uh, you know, told them, you know, I think they really should, uh, you know, look at me and take a chance. And uh, I ended up getting a call back and a letter saying, you know, they were bringing me to uh, Port Wainimi, California. And so I go there. My, my first year. This sounds playing. a little bit like Billy Clyde Gillespie determination. Indeed. Perseverance, you know, six, awesome. seeing it through. And so I get there. I think they whittled it down maybe to the 500 final applicants to, I think they brought only 25 guys in. 25 out of 500. M it was probably more that uh, submitted. Sure. And, um, we, you know, we're going through drills, training camp, and, you know, you see some of the guys talking, they know each other, it seemed like they have a bond. They weren't mm -hmm. stationed together. And then, you know, I'm kind of talking, finding out my research, and about eight of these guys played last year. Oh. And they only keep, keep it in, I want to say, 12. Oh, so you got four, <laughs> four, four spots. spots. So, so we're looking at, like, man, it's four spots. It's 20 of us. So you just, you know, you had to stand out. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that, that was just kind of a player I was. Uh, I was up to the challenge. And, you know, I made it. Um, you know, just kind of, you know, wasn't settling on, in. Baby. Um, you know, they had me on the ball, off the ball. Um, you know, I played multiple spots and, you know, defended. Defended really well and, and hustled and gave effort. And, you know, the coach, uh, you know, saw that, saw that in me and, you know, I made it from there. So you were on the All-Navy team like three years? Yes. Uh, my first year I made the All-Navy team. Played against the other branches. It's, you know, kind of big military tournament. Uh, my first year was at Fort Hood, um, Texas. And, Going back home, actually, you wow. know, living there, high school, so a lot of friends were able to come out, mm -hmm. and um, I was actually selected all armed forces that 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 uh, tournament as wow. well. Wow! And um, the next year, um, I was selected again for all Navy. Didn't make all armed forces. Didn't play as well. Our team didn't as well play as well either. But then in my third year, selected all Navy and all armed forces again. What an honor! It was. It was great. Great experience, actually. And um, it showed me really, you know, this is something, you know, I really want to do. And a lot of the guys on the Armed Forces team played. Some have played overseas. Most of them had went to college. It was a guy, Eric McMillan, um, kind of took me under his wing a little bit and talked to me. And he just talked about college and just going and, and being a student athlete and, you know, kind of pushed me. So and you're I, starting to wrestle with that. Maybe that's what's next for you. Yes. And how old are you at that time? Uh, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20. Okay. 
and then how do you end up at IUPUI with the Jaguars? Well, just kind of going through that process, knew I was uh, separating from the military, and started looking at schools. And there was a couple schools, you know, who were interested in me. It was one of my former um, teammates all, that went all Navy. He was in college, told the coach about me. So definitely they had an interest. And then um, IUPY, um, girlfriend at the time, she was in law school in, uh, in Indiana uh -huh. uh, at, at IU. In Indianapolis. And, and, and so she would, uh, she ended up writing a letter, you know, to the coaching, coaching staff. And then she actually, after writing a letter, like fate, I would just call it, um, is that like a, a family event, picnic or something? She ended up bumping into one of the coaches. Oh, my. And so then they kind of talked. Um, once, you know, she kind of found out he was a coach and talked to him, hey, sent this letter. And long story, uh, Coach Jones had been in the Marines, so he knew about the all-armed forces and the caliber of talent. Um, he was in the Marines, so he knew, he was aware. He knew how good you really were. And so then he was like, you know, because as coaches, now I know they get letters every, every, every day. Sure. And, and you know, with guys, you know, families and people, different coaches sending out letters. So you can't investigate everyone and after they kind of talked i think they revisited it maybe with coach hunter and then they uh you know i was we were playing in tournaments and it was the open recruiting period at the time and they were able to come out and see me at a tournament you mm -hmm. know with a couple other schools and uh, then it was kind of on the table i was offered you know some scholarships and chose iupui terrific and uh you have a, an outstanding career uh, i want you to talk about um, was it the 2003 uh, conference tournament? Yes. And, and uh, something very special happens. If you can kind of set it up for us at the end of the game. Okay. Uh, You're playing Valparaiso? Playing Valparaiso, kind of the nemesis, uh, you know, rival for, for us. You know, we saw them as a rival. They were on top. We wanted to be on top. Um, the year before, we got to the, to the finals. So the conference tournament, nobody expected us to. Uh, we beat a couple of the higher seeds to get there, and then Valpo kind of blew us, blew us out. You know, they were hot. I want to say they made about 16 threes over that game. So that just kind of left a taste in, in the returning guy's mouth. Mm -hmm. And um, we played that season, and, uh, you know, we had some guys sitting out, some transfers, some fifth-year guys, older guys, and junior college guys that played that year. So we had some seniors, uh, myself, and another guy, so we had a good older core of guys, and um, you know we kind of made it through the conference tournament. Two kind of uh, match, one our first one, one our second one was up big. Then that team fought back, and um, you know I think we was up 18, 19, and then they cut it to maybe three, and you know it got kind of scary. You know we thought we might lose it, and you know we turn around, had to play Valpo. Me and one of the teammates, kind of you know leading scorer, vocal. Loud guy, Odell Bradley, you know, one of my great friends to this day. And he's like, uh, you know, we're, we're talking, we have our shoot around. We have a good shoot around. Then me and him talk. And he's like, you know, if you come down late to the game, I'm going to take the shot and I'm going to win it. And then I said, you know, if it's late, I'm not going to pass it. I'm going to win the game. <laughs> You're the point guard. And so, but, you know, I was a high assist, get everybody involved. Yeah. You know, Coach yeah. Hunter always joke and be like the playmaker, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of when Madden came out and, and everything and with, with that little lingo. And so uh, we, we had that conversation back at the hotel. And, and I was like, no, I'm not going to pass it. I'm telling you right now. I'm not, not going to pass it. We're laughing about it. And then I, I go back, you know, to my room. We have a few hours and... Uh, so I pray, and I usually always pray before the game, just, you know, for injury, protect us uh, to get home safe for travel and uh, keep everyone, you know, safe and let's let everybody go play to the best of our ability. And, um, you pray you know, about praise the process, God. Praise about not about the win, right? The win, exactly. Yeah, and I can't tell you how many great athletes who are believers have told me that's the way they pray. And, and so it, it makes so much sense. Yeah, so, you know, do that always, you know, at the hotel and, to today, you know, I'm reliving it right now as, as, as I'm talking about it. this day. As I do a different, I say that prayer and um, something came over me just to, to pray for something a little more, you know, and it, it was unique. And I just asked for uh, a little extra strength. Um, I 
think it's gonna be, you know, a, a moment. Hmm. And I'm gonna need a little extra strength to help overcome this moment today. And um, I asked, uh, you know, uh, my dad and, you know, my grandparents, you know, and my uncle, that y'all overlooking me, please give me that extra strength. Um, <laughs> at this moment. And so, uh, you know, I say the prayer and I'm at peace. You know, we, we I, you know, relax and uh, we get to the game. You know, I have to do my normal treatment, but today it's, it wasn't really a drill. It was just, you know, different. I, you know, I get, you know, the treatment, see the trainer, do what I normally did. And, mm -hmm. and we play the game and it's close. You know, we're up. You know, we really should win the game. So to get to the end of the game, we're up. Uh, we end up being up two with the ball. We get the ball. One of our teammates, they had to foul us mm -hmm. in, in order to, 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 to get the ball back or put us on the free throw line. One of my teammates turns the ball over, um, tries to dribble it, maybe gets fouled. Mm -hmm. But they didn't call it. They didn't call it. And they shoot it, they steal it and shoot a three, miss it by this much. That would put them up one. Mm -hmm. They get the rebound, offensive put back, um, and score it. So then, you know, the, the, and, you know, the, the, the arena is kind of, and their fans are, mm -hmm. you know, because they expect it to, to win it and go. And, you know, Coach Kahuna calls a timeout, you know, trying to calm guys down. And, you know, he had done a great job through, through, through that whole time, you know, giving us a couple more stops. We'll win it, we'll win it. And then, um, it kind of like, you know, you know, we had to take it out full court. And How much time left? I want to say maybe 10. 10 seconds. And I would think tied. someone tied score. Inbound the ball to you. And he just kind of like kind of spaced everybody out and asked me to make a play, more or less. And wow. just kind of read, read it, y'all. You know, you'll come off and, you know, just kind of read it, which, you know, which we always kind of play that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great. You know, he knew I was a great, you know, decision maker. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, and, you know, Coach Hunter, a lot of trust with, with, within me and within our within the team. So it wasn't nothing elaborate, really drawn up. And uh, kind of just gives the play. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of, I hear him, but I go back out there. You know, you, you're up and down with the, the floor of the game. Mm -hmm. When I go back on the floor, calmness, a peace comes over me. Wasn't thinking about... Your prayer. Anything, mm -hmm. anything. And so then we go, uh, I get the ball, and I'm going. And uh, I, I've heard the uh, radio announcer at the time, I've, I've heard his replay of it. He's going, Crenshaw needs to go. He needs to, what is, you know, he needs to speed it up a little bit because I'm just kind of going at a pace. And then I make a move, and, you know, then I end up hitting a, a pull-up jumper, uh, put us up two, maybe a second. Uh -huh. A left, you know, right, right, kind of at the elbow, pull up jumper, and you know they call timeout, and then we ended up stealing the ball, and uh, game's over. You know, it reminds me so much of Philippians four. Paul writes, um, "Well, did you grow up singing? I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart." Heard it, not a singer. <laughs> <laughs> but then it goes, "I got the peace that passeth understanding down in my heart." Well, in Philippians four. Paul, that's where that comes from, and it's in the context of prayer. So you had the peace that passes all understanding because of the prayer that you had with God. And then you went to the big dance, and who did you draw in the tournament? Kentucky. <laughs> the overall number one seed, uh -huh. I want to say, I think they had five, ended, ended up being four or five pros, mm -hmm. the guys that played professionally at some point in the NBA, maybe five guys, I think, on that team. Um, you know, so a lot of publicity is just going to come with that, they're right. overall number one seed. Right. But, you know, so then it, it makes the story even greater. It's David and Goliath, mm -hmm. you know, it's get taken to, to, to that story. And So what happened in the game? Play Kentucky, start off, we score, they score, and um, they get up big at some point. Um, they, you know, they kind of go to run. They were pressure intense and uh, want to say up mid-20s the first half, and um, we're playing. You know, trying to, you know, trying to whittle it down, and we come out second half. Um, we kind of go back to our game plan um, and how we played all year, and um, 
We did some things different. Coach Hunter made some adjustments at the half, and I think we cut it back to like 13, and you know we was we was feeling good. And I think we kind of turned it over. They maybe hit a couple buckets, and kind of game set match. Um, and you know it's kind of over, but you know great, 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 great experience. Great experience. You know those guys, uh, Toby Smith. You know great guys. Uh, you know all those guys just kind of you know commended us, and you know. Now, Coach Hunter is pretty passionate about a few things. I'd like you to describe <laughs> what those are and how he's influenced your life. Uh, Coach Hunter, you know, playing for him and then coaching with him, I got to see, you know, uh, and understand him a lot more coaching with him as a player. Um, you know, sometimes it was kind of tough. You know, he was a guy that was passionate and he wanted to win and he was going to challenge you um, and he was going to be tough on you, but he was going to be tough on 1 through 15. Then our relationship, you know, grew in, in, in Boston. I, I fully understood his expectations, and um, he understood my expectations, my kind of limitations of kind of how far to go. And I was able to, he pushed me, I was able to push back some. And um, Well, you're the coach on the floor. Exactly. Sounds like it, the conversation went pretty well because uh, he gave the opportunity to be an assistant coach. Yes. Um, you know, I was overseas, came back, some injuries, and still really wanted to play, had playing in me, and, but I knew I wanted to get into coaching at some point, and then, um, and, you know, kind of, he talked to me about it, and said, well, positions opening up, you know, you know, the budget, athletic department was growing, and so they were able to add, finally kind of get, you know, full staffed, and, um, and so that was something, you know, I was kind of interested in. Sat with him, kind of did it. It was a struggle, you know, the first year or so. But, you know, he did something that I look back on was kind of a blessing towards me. He kind of only gave me a couple duties, um, scouting duties. But he uh, really just kind of let me, because, I, you know, I was coach. I was able to be on the floor, get active in the drills and practice. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then, you know, we would have our talks and he would kind of just, you know, you know, spoof him and give me, you know, certain things and give me more understanding mm -hmm. over the, the next couple of years. It's discipling so, you. Yes. I think there's four uh, turns in the track of discipline or discipleship and it's teach, I do, you watch, train, I do, you help, test, it's like a scrimmage, and then purities come to the top, uh, you do, I help, and then transform our jobs to get ourselves out of a job you do, I watch. And it's interesting to see that that's what he's done with you and now you're paying it forward and investing in players yes. in Indianapolis. Um, coach, did Coach Hunter ever make you coach without your shoes on? Yeah, well, he didn't make us. He, he gave us the option. Uh -huh. um, but the call is within itself. Uh, Manny, he, he's a, it's a great Christian man. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you can see the light mm -hmm. on him. Mm -hmm. So I know he met with Coach and then able just to sit down and, and talk with him and uh, a few of the coaches, well, the coaching staff and a few of the players were able to go do a shoe distribution in Peru. Wow. And so... Giving shoes to those in need. In and need. and you'd, you'd coach barefoot to show yeah. what, what you were about. Well, some of that, yes, exactly that. But when we got to go to Peru, it was just the eye opening. And, and it helped with me going the process of excuse me, strengthening my faith, just from, we got to sit, down, sit with the kids. We always prayed, um, you know, before we would go. And then with each kid, you know, we'd ask them, can we pray for you? You know, you, we would be individually with the kid. So you get to sit with them and wash their feet. Wow, we'd, you'd you know, wash, wash their feet. Wash their feet and give them a pair of uh, new socks and some shoes. Oh, my goodness. And so um, we would do that and then, you know, ask for them to pray. And some of the stories... Um, you know, you, you still can remember where it's kids, you know, just at seven, eight years old, pray that um, I can still go to school and, or I can work mm -hmm. to help my family or mm -hmm. help me get a job at, at such a young age or uh, kids being so grateful and thankful. Today, it wasn't all of them weren't Nikes, all of them weren't you know, all of them weren't Nikes or name brand shoes. You know, Samaritan's Feet had their own shoe, but at the same time, it was other shoes that were given to us by the, you know, shoe companies. And they would take the shoes. They didn't care. They didn't care if it wasn't a name brand. It was fit. It 
was new. But they didn't care if it was new. It was just the fact that it, it would fit. You know, some of them showed up with no shoes. Some of them showed up with two and three size bigger shoes because, you know, they just had to kind of pass them down or, you know, weren't able to afford. So that was what they were able to, to, to buy. And so to see them take it and be so thankful, you know, it's just humbling. And how many shoes, how many pairs of shoes has your team uh, given away now? Uh, I don't, I don't know the exact uh, number because I know we did distribution. Coach Hunter uh, did distributions. We did them at the Final Fours, and um, we would raise them. And and I know within that organization, you know, they, they Samaras Feet has passed out millions. Of, yeah, of, of shoes. Yeah. That's incredible. And, and it's grown. You know, with Coach Hunter, you know being a light and giving it back, mm -hmm. you know, someone came to him and he just, you know, gave the platform and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and spoke about Christ and, mm -hmm. um, you know, he blessed it yeah. to, to, to grow. Um, without Country Hunter, maybe it doesn't grow. You know, yeah. with his passion, they picked the right person mm -hmm. for it, his animation, and he talked about it and, you know, it, he has been and everybody and now they have a day where a lot of coaches in the country, high school, many levels do it. And so, and I know... Coach without their shoes. Without their shoes. To, for the awareness and then to raise the money yeah. and get the shoes. Well, Matt Crenshaw, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Uh, it's just been a blessing. Uh, you've been refined by fire. And it's, it's just a, uh, an honor to see how God has uh, brought discipline to your life so that you can pay it forward in young men in your coaching career. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, as you listen to Coach Crenshaw, I wonder if you thought about what I was thinking about. Am I being used by God to disciple others who will disciple others? Am I multiplying what God's done in me through other lives? And then I know that that's happening when they make disciples of others. You know, my prayer for you today is that you would ask God that question and ask him to bring someone to your life if there isn't one, somebody you can disciple, somebody you can teach and mentor and invest in, probably a younger person. And then that person can go and pay forward and multiply your investment in him or her. Ask God to bring to mind this week that person in your life.